That right there is man, Seamus. That that video from 2019, dude, still so good. Uh, and the fact that I think we forget that sometimes these guys they do need a little more coaching. But I was reminded <laughs> there that Martin Truex still one of the nicest dudes ever, right? Even in the face of of weak engine noises, Seamus, you still find a way to pump people up, man. Welcome back to the show. We're so excited you're going to be joining us this week in Nashville. Have you, you've always seemed to really enjoy your time around the NASCAR drivers. I do, you know, I do. I, I really think it's a huge uh, uh, crossover between WWE and, and, uh, and NASCAR, especially with the fans as well. You know what I mean? Like, it, uh, I see a lot of fans when I'm out who, like, they're, they're, they love both sports, sports entertainment, obviously, the sport of NASCAR. And, uh, I have a lot of fun too because it's a, it's for me it's I'm just like a big kid out there you know what I mean like I get to like jump in these these like supercars super NASCAR like uh, muscle cars they call them in the states and just have the crack right there right when we did the burnout on Broadway I got in the car and I was looking around for about five minutes for uh, seatbelts of course no seatbelts uh, <laughs> so I was like all right I guess this is it you know what I mean. But um, it was it was a lot of fun, and uh, NASCAR have been super uh, super nice to me as well, and they've like welcomed me with open arms, and uh, I just enjoy being being around the drivers and the teams, and and of course the organization. It's a lot of fun. So, Seamus, I know you spend your life on television and in front of thousands of people, but you're gonna be waving the green flag for Sunday's Cup race at Nashville Super Speedway. Do you get nervous? Do you get excited? Are there any nerves that go into waving the green flag and starting a Cup race? I actually waved the uh, green flag a couple of months back when we were in LA to call it the clash. And uh, I was almost tempted to super glue that thing onto my hand just to make sure, because I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I guarantee I'm going to the, I'm the first nutter here who's just going to like basically let that flag fall out of my hand. You know what I mean? But uh, it's just try not to make uh, make an, an agent of yourself. You know what I mean? That's that's the key, especially when I'm, I'm going into like uh, someone else's uh, backyard. You know what I mean? Um, it's Which is unfamiliar to me. But... The more of these I do, uh, the more familiar I get and the less the nerves go away. But it's still a massive thrill as well, especially standing out there and those muscle cars just flying around the track, and, like the noise, the engines and everything, and like just how close you are to the action. It's unbelievable. I uh, I did the, uh, I was pace car for Daytona in 2020 before the whole world was shut down. Um, and it was awesome. Like, I think I, I think I was winning the race. I think I was still winning the race uh, for the whole week. Cause I, I like, I did about seven or eight laps uh, we had the CEO of Coca-Cola in the back, and there was uh, obviously there was someone from NASCAR here beside me, but it was so much fun. I was doing like 80 around that track in Daytona, and actually, to be honest with you, it felt like it was doing 15 mile an hour. That's that's just like that's just the experience that you know. What I mean, then you take off and you see those cars just bailing around, like just just like a, it's going so fast it's a blur. Do you know what I mean? But uh, it was it was an unbelievable thing. I actually. My nephew was born that day at Daytona 2020, so I got the, the car and I got the whole program built off frame from. So that, that that went in his bedroom wall as well. So it was it was a double kind of like double celebration day for me. That's awesome. I love it, man. I love to hear people experiencing racing and just love it as much as you have and showing that passion for it. But one thing we've seen as of late, sometimes in the Xfinity series and a little bit in Cup is some fights break out. And actually, there's some drivers that have been taking fighting lessons as of late. So I got a question for you. What, what should every driver have in their arsenal sort of as a move when another driver approaches them after a race, sort of like, this is my go-to thing to make sure this guy doesn't want to mess with me next time? Well, goes, goes with a goes with question, man. Bro kick. You know, <laughs> as soon as they step up, you hit with that bro kick. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Down the bleeding shots. This is standing up to each other and backing up and throwing these little punches and stuff. You know what I mean? Or swinging these sw wild swinging and stuff. And talking there's no need for talking you know what i mean there's already it's already heated look at that the headlock that took him down that's good it's a bit of a good headlock there you know what i mean good amateur move, wrestling move but what you want to do is you know it's going to kick off right this talking stuff or this like pointing your finger and you know you see these swings come a mile away but you catch with that bro kick which is a kind of jumping uh, pump kick no it's over don't have to worry about it bam just be in there for us and the argument's over you just move on to the next race well, I'm just taking notes. Beautiful. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say, Seamus, uh, Parker races uh, many weekends when he's not on camera for. So I think really that was the old I've got a friend who is wondering, but it's really, it's really just Parker. So it's I think up. that's, a, you that's got a great question. You got me. Uh, also, I'd like to point out, Seamus, when you, you guys, when you guys as superstars, I've never seen any of you wearing helmets. 
So clearly, a lot of these NASCAR drivers aren't watching your shows to realize what a real fight looks like. They got to take the helmet off. You know what I mean? That's cheating already. Thing is, though, like, uh, I played rugby years in when I was in Ireland, and uh, we never wore helmets there either. You know what I mean? So it was kind of like it was a really, it was a really great uh, test for me or start for me before I went into the WWE. Um, but you know, at the same time, I think I think the biggest thing in these sports as well is the fact that like. You know, people just see the actual races or in WWE, they see the fights, but they don't see what goes on be, be, uh, behind the scenes as well. And like the amount of like physical exertion these guys put out in a race. I mean, they're in there, they're in cars for hours in unbelievable heat. And they're, you know, they're going around that track and they got to keep, I mean, their concentration has to be on point. And um, I was more, I was very interested when I did the first, when we did the interview stuff that you put on at the beginning of, uh, uh, well, before I came on the show. And um, I just, I was very interested in asking what the regime, what the regime was, how they worked out, you know what I mean? How they took care of their fitness and their diet and everything. Because that's, that's just as important. It's not just about driving a car. It's about being your best, a top physical condition as well to drive that car for such a long time. Again, with other opponents breathing down your neck, you know? I, I just, I, I find that sort of really, really exciting. But I'll tell you what else I find it's exciting. Funny. I find it, the fact that I've been here in Nashville for four years, it's my home away from home. And I'm super excited uh, to be at the National Super uh, Speedway this Sunday. And I want to thank, uh, you know, Eric Moses as well, who's the president of the, of the track, uh, for letting me come down and act like a big 12-year-old kid, even though I'm a lot older than that. But when I go to those tracks, I feel like a 12-year-old kid. Man, that's it. Seamus, I was going to ask you what you think about Nashville, but I already know you love the place. We're so excited as, as NBC is headed back. We're taking over the races. We can't wait to see you there this weekend. Thanks for joining us, brother. We're so excited to have you. Yeah, I also want to say this too, man. I, I was blown away by the, how authentic the race car drivers were as well, like stars. They always said to me, I've always heard the term like, you know, never meet your heroes because they always be disappointed. Yeah, and I want to get on the, uh, so I think that the guy who really stood out for me was Dale Earnhardt Jr. Like, he was an unbelievable fella. I know he's loved by everybody across the country, especially hardcore NASCAR fans. Everybody knows who he is, but I'll be honest with you, he was a total gent, class act, and I hope to get to see him again this Sunday as well, because that'll just, that'll be the icing on the cake for me. Absolutely, man. We can't wait to see you out there this weekend. Big thanks to Seamus and all our guests today joining us for NASCAR on NBC Motor Mouse. We will see you this weekend, Friday on USA Network and Saturday on Peacock and NBC. We will see you Thursday night on USA Network for Life in the Fast Lane with Austin Dillon. Thank you for joining us. We will see you in Nashville. And I'll be teaching y'all bro kicks. <laughs> <laughs>